The, the statistics are that two-thirds of people are overweight in Western countries, and maybe a third are obese, and it's due to what they eat. It's really not due to lack of physical activity. I think that's secondary. Secondary in the fact that they don't feel well enough to exercise, and secondary in terms of its impact on health and personal appearance. We gotta get the food right first. When you stop doing things that make people sick, they get well. It's, it's just as simple as this, and this is one of the most important concepts for people to get. It's the composition of the diet. They're not going to cure dietary diseases with a pill or a surgery. You are going to fix dietary diseases by fixing the problem, which is the food. And when you fix the food, what happens is people get healthy. Everybody tells you, don't eat rice, turns to sugar, and as a result, you'll become obese. And that's why there are 1.73 billion obese Asians eating rice. <laughs> sure, of course not. I mean, think about it. All those people are trim. So the solution, the solution for the obesity problem, even though exercise is important, even though you don't want to overeat, the real solution is to get the fat you wear out of your diet. That's right. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. Stop wearing it. Getting it out. And instead, satisfy that powerful and correct hunger drive by eating a diet of rice, corn, potatoes with green and yellow vegetables. The solution is a quick one, and the weight loss will go so quickly and so permanently. One of the uh, common problems that I see in my patients is uh, people who have narrowed arteries to their heart. That's right, the heart arteries, which supply the blood to the muscle of the heart, they get plugged up. They get plugged up through years of atherosclerosis, we call it, blockages. And those blockages, we know what causes them. It's a rich Western diet full of cholesterol and fat, a diet sent around animal foods like chicken, fish, beef, pork, cheese, yeah, various dairy products. These are the foods that make the arteries sick, that injure the arteries, that cause the arteries to have a response of forming atherosclerosis. It's the food. Have you heard about GERD, G-E-R-D, gastroesophageal reflux disease, that there's an answer to your problem? And that problem is often pain. In fact, pain so bad sometimes it can feel like a heart attack that you have in your stomach and in your chest area. This is from stomach acids refluxing, you know, gastroesophageal reflux disease, refluxing up into the esophagus. Well, there can be real consequences to this reflux. You can burn the lower esophagus and cause terrible inflammation, and that inflammation can turn into cancer called adenocarcinoma. That acid can get up into your upper airways and can get on your vocal cords and cause you to cough and to be hoarse. That acid can get on your teeth and it'll take the enamel off the teeth and get into your nose and cause sinusitis and you can breathe that acid in. And that's how many people, if not most people, get asthma. So you want to keep that acid out of your esophagus and in the stomach. How do you do that? Well, the first step is to change your diet, of course. You change your diet and you get rid of those acid producing foods like dairy products and meat products, even chicken and fish. You get those things out of the diet. Instead, you eat a diet of rice, corn, potatoes, green and yellow vegetables. That's the first step. Fix the food usually solves the whole problem. Almost everybody throws away their antacids. Second step, raise the head of the bed. So at night when you're sleeping, gravity pulls that acid out of your esophagus and back into your stomach. Four inch blocks under the head of your bed. An absolute miracle. Cost free, side effect free. Just raise the head of the bed. In our society, people get too little sunshine. As a result, they have problems with low vitamin D levels. Now the response of the doctor should be, well, this means you need to go out and get more sunshine, but that's rarely communicated to the patient. Instead, just like the rest of medicine, the communication is buy pills, buy pills, buy pills. Well, this is part of what I call disease mongering. You turn healthy people into patients, you tell them they got a disease called vitamin D deficiency, and you hook them on drugs that they have to come back to the office to get evaluated, and they have to get more blood tests. It just increases the business terribly. Well, it's not the right answer. Taking vitamin D pills cause nutritional imbalances. They're associated with an increased risk of pancreatic cancer and prostate cancer. Raises uh, your bad cholesterol. Uh, it increases the chance of uh, kidney stones and other kidney and autoimmune problems. Taking pills cause nutritional imbalances. The right answer, if you're worried about your vitamin D level, is to go out and get more sunshine. The other thing involved here is an over-exaggeration of what normal is. People are told that 
they have to be 30 nanograms per milliliter or greater to pass the vitamin D test. In truth, the scientific research says that you only have to be at 20 nanograms per milliliter to pass. Well, if you exaggerate what's normal, you get a lot more people as patients. That's one of the problems, too. So get a vitamin D test if you're worried about it and respond appropriately by using the correct normals. Anything below 20 nanograms per milliliter means you get more sunshine, not take pills. You get out and get more sunshine, more sun exposure. Now, if you uh, look at these gallstones, what you find is they're made of cholesterol. Aha, the first hint that it might be a dietary problem. That's right, almost all gallstones are made of uh, cholesterol. Now, where do you think that fat ends up? Well, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Yes, that's right. Uh, salt is a, is a uh, primary taste of the human being. You, you might remember from your high school or junior high biology that the tip of the tongue tastes salt with pleasure. Was that a mistake of nature? No, it wasn't. People are supposed to eat salt. In fact, we're supposed to seek salt. As a matter of fact, I can substantiate scientifically and logically that if you don't get enough sodium, you risk illness. You like salt. I want you to enjoy your diet. Put a little salt on the surface of the food. You'll be happy as long as the, the food that you put that salt on is, is healthy food, such as vegetables and fruits. You'll lose weight, excess weight, and you'll regain the health you've lost. And you know that the drug companies have been known and caught at hiding these adverse effects and exaggerating the benefits of their drugs. And they've been caught, and as a consequence, some of the drugs have been taken off the market, but the sad thing is, is that the people in the pharmaceutical industry, they also work closely with the regulatory agencies, the FDA, the USDA, the EPA. I mean, all of our government agencies, they're so closely tied with industry that you can't get an honest appraisal to protect the consumer. So what are you left with? Well, you know, my basic motto to you is this. Get out of the business. Get away from doctors. Get away from drugs. And the way you do that is you stay healthy. And most of the sickness that we have in our society that requires pills like cholesterol and blood pressure and diabetes and pain pills and laxatives and antacids, et cetera, almost all of these are due to a diet. And fortunately, most of these are corrected easily by changing your diet. The problem is never deficiency of protein. The problem is excess protein. That's right. People typically take in too much protein. And the consequences on their health is devastating. I mean, consider you need a certain amount of protein. So you eat, you eat food, you get the protein you need, and then you have extra. What do you do with that extra protein? Do you store it? I don't think so. If you store it, you store it in your muscles, and everybody would look like a bodybuilder. No, that protein has to be gotten rid of by the body. It, has to, it places a burden on the body, and then it has to be eliminated. Well, one of the primary burdens from all that excess protein is that protein is made up of amino acids. Acid. And so the body has to buffer that acid, and it dissolves the bones to buffer the acid. That's the beginning of osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is caused by a high-protein, high-acid diet, and that's the American diet. And I want you to know I sincerely mean this. By definition, type 2 diabetics are always curable by fixing the problem, which is the Western diet. Get rid of it. Substitute it for a starch-based diet with the addition of fruits and vegetables. Lose the associated excess weight, the obesity, and you will be cured. That's what the truth is, and that's what the science says. And my more than 35 years of experience as a medical doctor shows that to be true. Multiple injuries cause chronic diseases day after day after day. The body is injured, and it tries to recover. It tries to heal. It just can't keep up. Like, for example, a cigarette smoker. They keep coughing and coughing and coughing because of that repeated injury, and there is a cure, and you know what it is, and I'm not even going to say it. It's the same thing with uh, dietary diseases like heart disease and obesity and constipation and indigestion and arthritis and so on and so on. Yeah, the doctor could intervene, but it has to be done. Whoa, big, big step back. And that big step back is, uh, is the step of stopping the repeated injury. That's that fork and spoon that shovels the fat and cholesterol in the mouth and in the body. That's, that's the source of the repeated injury. You stop that, the body does what it's always been doing, always been doing, which is healing. It's just now it can outpace the injury. And you heal, and the diseases go away. Or look at other animals. How about some really biggies like elephants, hippopotamuses, and giraffes? Do they drink milk? Don't think so. Do they eat plants? Yes, they do. There is no such thing as dietary calcium deficiency. In other words, 
no person has ever developed a disease due to too little calcium in their diet. I know, some of you are thinking about osteoporosis. Not true, we've discussed that. Osteoporosis is due to an excess of animal protein and acid. People love to hear good news about their bad habits. So, so don't put up with this nonsense. The potato is one of the healthiest, most trimming, energetic, and muscle building foods that you can eat. As a matter of fact, uh, Mary and I went and looked around town to see how much it would cost to get 2,500 calories of starch. That's 2,500 calories is about what a very active man would eat a day is 2,500 calories. What it costs is about a dollar and a half to buy rice, potatoes, corn, beans, about a dollar and a half. You add to that some fresh fruits and vegetables that are in season, you now raise the cost of your daily menu plan to about $3 a day. Compare that to the cost of about uh, $14 a day for even eating in fast food restaurants. You just saved $11 a day. And so, plain and simple, you're not going to make it on a green and yellow vegetable diet. What do you have to do instead? Well, you have to base your diet on starches. These are vegetable foods that have loads of calories. It's easy to get all the calories you need, but your body doesn't get too many. And if you take in excess, it gets rid of the excess so you don't get fat on starch-based diets. Diets are rice, corn, potatoes. That's right. Potatoes are ideal food for health, weight loss, diabetes, etc. Uh, some beans, peas, and lentils. You need that energy. And then you can throw in some green and yellow vegetables as side dishes. Those are fine. Add some color, interest, a few extra nutrients like vitamin A and C, and that's all good. But don't you try and base your diet just on these green and yellow vegetable foods because you'll be starving. And you'll be on to the next thing because it's not going to work for you. You must eat a starch-based diet. But long, for long-term weight loss, you want to find a program that you enjoy. You look forward to the foods. They taste good. You get plenty to eat. You don't have to think about dieting. And the basic McDougal program does that for you. But the solution is very simple, and that is that a, a woman who becomes pregnant needs to eat the best diet for human beings, and that's a diet based on starches. So it's not just a low-fat diet that you're looking for. No, to get the health that you're looking for, you must switch to a diet of whole foods. You must focus on starches so you get that satisfaction, that energy. You can add some more green and yellow vegetables if you want. That'll make it healthier. So if you're, if you're asking yourself, why is it? I've cut the fat on my diet. I'm still not feeling well. I'm still not looking the way that I think I should. Ask yourself, are you eating the way that Dr. McDougall recommends? Or have you got your own version of a low-fat diet going there with all these things that you could buy in the supermarket that are labeled low-fat but are high in refined flours and loaded with sugar? I bet if you follow this advice, you'll get the results that you're looking for. So one of the bigger mistakes people make is they switch to a healthier diet, but they don't put away the bottle of olive oil. You know, uh, the other mistake people make is they think that one kind of animal food is healthier than another kind of animal food. They're, they're basically the same. They all contain the same type of dietary poisons, whether it happens to be eggs or cheese or beef or pork or chicken. You know, these can all be lumped into one category as a category that's a serious burden on the human body. You ought to find a few recipes that you like. Just make them over and over and over and over and over again. You'll love that simplicity. Don't make a big deal out of this. This can be very simple. The other mistake that people make is they think they have to give up salt and sugar. Well, you know, they're not health foods. Salt and sugar aren't health foods. They certainly bring a lot of pleasure to your diet, and most people tolerate these substances very well. It's no detraction from their personal appearance or recovery from disease, but it makes a huge difference as to whether or not you're going to eat the food. So I'll put a little salt and sugar on the surface of the food and maybe a little bit of spice on it to make it taste good so you'll stick with the program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John McDougall. In fact, Starches like potatoes and sweet potatoes have all the vitamins and minerals you'll ever need. It has everything except for B12. And uh, grains and legumes, they're missing two vitamins. So you can't live on a grain and legume based diet. They're missing A and C. But you could add a piece of broccoli to your rice and then you'd have all the A and C you needed. The reason that I believe, and I think I can prove to you, that the human being lives on starch, is a starch eater. That our diet, your diet, my diet, is a starch-based diet. The reason is, is that all large, 
populations, trim healthy people throughout all verifiable human history have obtained the bulk of their calories from starch. The other thing that Dominic talks about in his paper is the importance of starch in the development of the human, human brain. Now, I know your friends tell you that the reason we're human beings, we have this big brain, which is three times the size of a chimpanzee, is because we eat meat or we eat fish. You've heard it. I know you've heard it. Well, that's not true. Uh, I know it's not true, not only because of archaeologic findings, but I'm also a doctor, and I know what the brain burns. The human brain burns glucose. Yeah. 20% of our energy every day goes to the brain. Well, these are typical stories, by the way. You know, you see those ads uh, on Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers. This is the best case scenario. Don't expect these results. You should expect these results. <laughs> and I'll ask the group. I'll say, well, okay, doctors, tell me something. Uh, how many cigarette smokers have you had quit smoking and not get better? How many? Raise your hand. Nobody raises their hand. Every one of them got better. Okay, how many hardcore drunks have you taken care of who quit the booze who haven't got better? Come on, raise your hand. Okay, my question is, how many people who live off of grease and meat and cheese who switch to a starch-based diet don't get better? You know, nobody, if they ever had the experience, they'd say the same thing. They've never seen it not happen. Primary source of energy for the body is sugar, carbohydrate. By purpose, the USDA does not put in the dietary guidelines the terms that would cause Americans to act. They don't vilify meat and dairy. They don't use those words. They use saturated fat and cholesterol. And you have no idea what a saturated fat and cholesterol looks like. You've never grown one in your garden. You've never looked at one in your plate. You have no idea what that is. But if they told you in the U.S. Dietary Guidelines that fat and protein mean dairy and meat, then you might act, and that could be a serious consequence to agribusiness. That's the greatest the greatest source of child abuse that goes on in the world today is the American diet. Challenge me if you think I'm wrong. Otherwise, every woman realizes that breastfeeding is the only way to feed a child. See, one of the major problems with doctors is they can't see beyond their dinner plate. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do as Surgeon General. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, you will no longer be able to buy uh, infant formula at CVS Pharmacy or Safeway. You must go to the doctor and beg for a prescription, just like you would narcotics. And if you write as a doctor a prescription for it, you'll be reviewed by a medical ethics board to see whether or not you're practicing good medicine. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put labels on supplements that say things like vitamin E will give you heart disease, and beta carotene will increase your risk of cancer, and vitamin A will destroy your bones, and folic acid will increase your risk of dying of cancer and heart disease. I'm going to put warning labels on all the supplements. Yes, I am. And I know you don't like that. Before I get into this discussion, though, I want to make something absolutely clear. And it's that when I am talking about milk, I am not talking about mother's milk. I'm not talking about human breast milk. Human breast milk is absolutely essential for human babies. It's, it's one of the three big, big crimes against society that's going on right now, and that is depriving mothers not only here in this land, but in underdeveloped countries of human breast milk, instead feeding them formula. The other two crimes against society are the tobacco industry, criminals, the tobacco industry, and also the meat and dairy industry, selling their goods, their poisons, their death, not only at home, but abroad in underdeveloped countries. Breast milk is absolutely essential for good health. If you fail to breastfeed your child, you're, you're causing some problems that could be immediate, life-threatening, and also could be long-term. And these are, these are real problems. In this country, by the way, if you fail to breastfeed feed in underdeveloped countries, like India, rural Africa, rural Asia, then you cause even more severe problems. It's estimated that bottle feeding kills more than one million children a year across the world that would not have died if they would have had a message to breastfeed instead. But cow's milk is not the right food for people. Milk is specifically designed for a species of animal. Say you just eat plant foods, rice, corn, oranges, potatoes, and so on. Well, all it will do that gut wall is it will go out and reach out into that food supply, and it will grab that calcium and pull that calcium in very efficiently into the blood, and it will always meet your calcium needs. Now, how do I know it always meets calcium needs? Because I have searched, the World Health Organization has searched, 
Uh, the United States government has searched for a single case of calcium deficiency caused by a low calcium diet. And we have all come up empty handed. There has never been a case of dietary calcium deficiency ever reported in the world literature. There is no such disease. And yet, and yet, billions of people live on diets that contain no dairy products, no Tums, no calcium pills, and they grow normal adult skeletons. How could they do that? You wouldn't believe that would be possible if you listened to the dairy industry, the calcium pill industry, would you? First thing I want to point out to you is that calcium is a mineral. It comes from the ground. Always remember that it comes from the ground. Calcium does not come from milk originally. It does not come from plants originally. Where it comes from is from the ground. All your minerals, copper, manganese, iron, potassium, sodium, all these minerals that you're so busy talking about and many of you are taking supplements for, all of these minerals come from the ground. The basic research shows that a person, whether that person is nursing or pregnant, requires 150 to 200 milligrams of calcium a day. That's it. The average calcium intake in underdeveloped countries is 300 to 500 milligrams a day. Try and remember some of these figures. Calcium intake for the average American is 500 to 600 milligrams a day. World Health Organization. World Health Organization that's responsible for the nutritional needs of most people on this earth recommend 400 to 500 milligrams a day. But uh, industry influenced organizations in this country recommend things, amounts such as 1,000 to 1,300 milligrams a day from the U.S. Food and Nutrition Board and the National Institutes of Health, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. The uh, dairy industry has influenced, no, excuse me, let me say it correctly. The dairy industry has paid for almost all of the research studying the effects of calcium on bone health. What causes osteoporosis? The bones are designed to last a lifetime. Your bones aren't designed to dissolve when you're 40, 50, or 60 years old. They're designed to last you for 85 years, strong, to carry you around, to do all the activities that a normal woman or man is supposed to do. So this has to be a disease. There has to be something wrong. We have to be living by the wrong set of rules. The wrong set of rules is the fact that we are eating a diet not intended for human beings. When we eat acid, what happens is the body has to neutralize that acid. Why? Because pH has to be maintained precisely. If it isn't, then other chemical reactions in the body don't work. You get very sick. So the body maintains pH, and it does it by neutralizing all that acid. Well, how does it neutralize the acid? The primary buffering system of the body is the bones. The bones dissolve. They release bicarbonates and other kinds of neutral, or excuse me, alkaline materials, which neutralize the acid. And that's how you lose your bones. You uh, essentially pour acid on them, and uh, they dissolve. The moral of the story is no matter how much calcium you consume, you will not correct the problem until you deal with the cause which is the high-protein, high-acid American diet. All the mechanism, mechanisms for this are worked out. Those bones, by the way, that you've lost, they pass out of the body through the kidneys, they solidify, and that's how you get kidney stones. And what they're trying to do is sell more milk to kids. The kids are not drinking enough milk. So what do they do? They make it strawberry milk and chocolate milk, and they put it in fancy cartons, and they, they do everything they can to get the kids to drink more milk, and it's succeeding. They tell you to take the Coke machines out of the schools. Good. But what are they replacing them with? Something worse, which is the milk machines. Cow's milk is designed to grow a calf from 60 pounds to 600 pounds. That's a job. And then, and then as you get older, what happens? The prostate closes down. You can't urinate. I mean, meat's really good for you, right? Now you can't urinate. And then you get prostate cancer, and then you need to buy the little blue pills because you can't get an erection. Now, isn't meat a manly thing to do? You're impotent. You're impotent. You're infertile as a consequence of aberrant eating habits. The source of repeated injury for the diseases that uh, we suffer from is an uncontrolled fork and spoon the very foods advocated by low-carbohydrate diet gurus. There's no contradictory evidence. Scientific truth is meat, eggs, and dairy foods are the source of inflammation. The human beings were not designed to consume cow's milk. And cow's milk, just think about it. 
it's the wrong food and easily is a major source of the disease that people suffer from. So you have to make false associations to sell intelligent people these low carb diets. They claim carbohydrates, sugar, remember sugar, starches, vegetables and fruits, carbohydrates are the cause of diabetes. Well, diabetes, you know, they have high blood sugar. So you assume it has to be true. And after you eat starches, vegetables and fruits, your blood sugar goes up. Well, it's supposed to go up. That's why you eat. Worldwide, just look at the picture. Look at the countries where obesity is common. Type 2 diabetes and obesity are virtually equal. Look at diabetes worldwide. You know, in China, uh, back before 1980, fewer than 1% of the population was diabetic. Today, China has the highest incidence of diabetes in the world, 12% of the population. What happened? Their genes change? They catch a virus? Meat consumption. Dairy consumption. People eat these foods, they're rich foods, they get fat and sick like kings and queens of old. Then for me to define for you what to do in black and white. It's just like if you've ever been a cigarette smoker. I've never met a cigarette smoker who cut down and quit. I've never met, I've been in medicine 40 years. I've never met an alcoholic that sobered up by switching to beer. I've never seen it happen. <clears throat> you must have black and white uh, decisions that you can make. If I tell you that white is starches, vegetables, and fruit, and black, in other words, rich foods, whatever you want to call them, however you want to categorize it, the rich foods are meat, dairy, eggs, poultry, fish, and oil, then you can take action. If they tell you moderation is okay, a little bit is okay, I don't understand a one cigarette or two cigarettes a day. I know two packs, I know none. That's why I teach the way I do is I want you to be able to take action. How in the world do you expect a diabetic to get better when they don't have the truth? Type 2 diabetes, by the way, is 100% curable. 100% curable with dietary change. That's by definition, it's 100% curable. Uh, you want to stay out of the medical business. And the only way I know how to stay out of the medical business is to get healthy. The only way I know how to get healthy is to fix the problem. The problem's the food. The, the answer is so stupid, simple. All of you should be sitting here and asking why, if it's so stupid, simple, and so inexpensive, and solves so many problems, as you've learned this week. This is not the solution to one problem. And I do want to emphasize, this is this starch solution. And until you understand you are a starch eater, a starchitarian, a starch of war, you're, you're lost. You're trying to eat nutrient-dense foods, broccoli, cauliflower, etc. you starve. You uh, try and make up for the calorie deficiencies because you're not eating rice, corn, potatoes, and beans. And, uh, and uh, uh, you focus on these uh, nutritarian, high-density nutrient foods, and you're starving. What do you reach for? The nuts and seeds and avocados, and now you're fat. You just don't understand. Why doesn't it work? Is there something wrong with the human body? Was the human body designed incorrectly? 400 million years of evolution or divine creation? Is it wrong? Ladies and gentlemen, we can agree on one thing, it is not wrong. How you get autoimmune diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis and lupus type of arthritis and psoriatic arthritis, is a foreign protein gets into your blood. In this case that I'm talking about is beef. Beef is not supposed to be in your blood. This is foreign protein. This is a cow protein. It gets through the gut lining into the bloodstream. Now you have cow floating around your blood. The body thinks this could be a bacterial coat. This could be a viral coat. This is a foreign protein. So it produces antibodies from the lymphocytes that attack this beef protein, as it should, like it would a virus. Or in the case of dairy, it does the same thing. Cow's milk protein now gets into your blood. The body makes antibodies against the cow milk protein. It attacks the cow milk protein, as it should. Unfortunately, it's not all that specific, and as a result, not only does it attack the cow milk protein, but it attacks similar proteins in your body. It's called molecular mimicry. And the body will produce antibodies that attack that cow milk protein, but it'll also attack similar looking proteins on, say, for example, the beta cells, the insulin producing cells of your pancreas. 
And now the body, which has made an appropriate antibody to this foreign protein, which is cow protein, finds an almost identical pro in fact, there are identical sequences of amino acids on, say, the beta cells of the pancreas. Now it attacks those beta cells, destroys the beta cells, and you get type 1 diabetes. As it does with the cartilage, the uh, collagen tissues, and the joints. And we've shown that in scientific studies. This is cross-reactivity. There's this molecular mimicry where the body will cross-react, for example, with cow's milk protein. You eat cow's milk protein, cheese, cow's milk, et cetera. And it would happen with goat milk or whale milk or whatever, any foreign milk. You get it into the body. The protein's in the bloodstream. The body makes antibodies as it should to this foreign protein. But these antibodies, not only do they attack the foreign cow milk protein, but they find similar sequences of amino acids on your joint tissues, and they attack them, cause inflammation, and that's how you get these inflammatory arthritis, as well as a whole slew of autoimmune diseases. It's not just, not just arthritis. These are the autoimmune diseases you're familiar with. These are diseases, when I say autoimmune diseases, you think the body attacks itself. Well, it does. How stupid of the body to attack itself? Why would it do that? It attacks the hair follicles, gives you hair loss. It attacks the spine, gives you ankylosis spondylitis. It attacks the bowel, gives you Crohn's disease. It attacks the muscles in the skin, gives you dermatomyositis. Type 1 diabetes when it attacks the pancreas. Inflammatory arthritis, the psoriatic, lupus, various kinds of arthritis is when it attacks the joints. These all have in common, the body is attacking itself because it gets damaged to the intestinal lining. So these foreign proteins can get into the body, which they're not supposed to be doing, just like the virus is supposed to get into your body. But once it's there, the body makes antibodies to this foreign protein as it should. But because we have molecular mimicry, in other words, the molecules are copies. They are similar between your own tissues, be it the thyroid, the kidneys, et cetera, between your own tissues <coughs> and this foreign, in this case, <clears throat> food protein. That's how you get the autoimmune diseases. But everybody knows <clears throat> that food poisoning or the diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is caused by the food. And most people realize that if you stop the food poisoning, 100% of type 2 diabetics are cured. Yeah, 100% are cured, just by definition of the disease. It's due to diet, type 2 diabetes is and associated obesity, and you could cure it 100% of the time. Just think about this. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. It's food poison. So there you go. The food poisons are animal foods and vegetable oils. We need to identify clearly what people are supposed to eat. If I take the meat and the dairy and the oil away from you, what are you going to eat? You're going to eat starch. That's what I believe is the human diet, is a starch-based diet. Immediate results, and long-term, if you have food poisoning, and you stop the repetitive injury from the knife and fork, you will solve most of your food problems, food poisoning problems, within four months. You can just count on it. You could do anything for four months. In four months, you'll have lost significant amounts of weight, maybe 40 pounds if you need to. In four months, the inflammatory conditions like arthritis will have gone. You may be left with residual. You may be left with some deformities, some arthritic changes that are permanent, just like if you're a smoker. You may be left with some scars in your lungs, but the acute illness stops. And it stops because you stop the repetitive injury from food poisoning. I have drawn certain lines around my recommendations. And one of the lines is you don't eat animal foods and you don't eat vegetable oils. But Dr. McDougall, you allow salt and sugar. Why do you do that? Because I want you to eat the food. And you won't if I don't add some salt and sugar and spice. I mean, some of you will, but most of you won't. That's what you love, is salt, sugar, and spice. The tip of the tongue tastes with pleasure, salt and sugar. It wasn't a mistake to have that design on your tongue. I can reward you tremendously by giving you a little salt and sugar. Not ideal but I can get you to eat the potatoes and the rice if I put a little salt, sugar, and spice over it, and that's why I use it. How many people do you know that have been run over, fallen potholes, damaged their hips and joints from exercise? Not that there aren't some benefits, but it's taught as if it's the panacea. 
like the US Preventative Services Task Force, they give equal weight to diet and exercise. Not so. You can't cure food poisoning with more exercise. Don't even try. You may cover up some of the outward signs. But it's the composition of the food. That's all you have to care about. And I've had doctors challenge me with this in, in medical meetings. So you can't say they'll always get better from following the same kind of diet. And you know what I ask them? I say, <clears throat> how many patients have you asked to quit smoking who haven't gotten better? You know, raise your hand. Tell me about what. Never a response. How many drunks have you taken off the booze who haven't gotten better? Well, no one has an experience other than they always get better. Same thing with the food. You change it from grease to uh, starch, and people always get better because you change it from wrong to right. It always works. It's that profound.